When the prisoner wrote this letter back to the church that he loved, he well knew that their situation wasn't a bed of roses. Their town had been the site of the last battle of the Civil War. As a reward to the victorious soldiers, the Philippians' tillable land had been confiscated and given to the Roman veterans. This had put them on an economic precipice. And their social status as non-Romans caused them to be ostracized. Meanwhile, in Rome, the Romans were deciding whether their prisoner Paul would live or die. Paul had given the Philippians an update on how prison life was going. He had exhorted them to be humble in their relationships with one another and address some issues in the church. Now, he concludes his letter in what I think of as an advice sandwich, but before giving any advice, he reminds them of how much he loves them. To mix metaphors, the bookends to his advice echo one another. He exhorts them to, quote, stand firm in the Lord in this way, unquote, and to put into practice whatever they had learned, received, or heard from Paul. He encourages the two female leaders to, quote, be of the same mind in the Lord, unquote, and adds a commendation for how they had worked alongside him back in his days of freedom. Then, to all the church, he issues a series of commands. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Next, get your gentle on with everyone. Next, chill and pray. God is with you. Have a little talk with Jesus. You can tell him all about your sorrows. You can ask for his help. And don't forget, add some thanksgiving to the mix, and the peace will begin to flow your way. Feed your brain a healthy diet. I saw one guy sitting in the pew waiting for the church service to begin who said he was watching the news, which was code for watching hateful spin on people who think differently. Do you spend more time ingesting negative social media and cable news or in prayer and Bible study? Do you meditate on what is noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent or praiseworthy? Changing your mental diet can do wonders for the spirit. Paul then again reminds them to put their faith into practice. When we talk about a medical doctor's practice, we're talking about putting his medical training to use. We should keep in mind that our rejoicing, our gentleness with one another, our conversations with God, and our healthy mental diet are all meant to work themselves out in practicing our faith, loving God, loving others, in a way that brings God glory and builds others up. When you square away your internal life and put your beliefs into action, the God of peace will be with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you in these troubled times.